Keith here. Suppose I have a situation where I have a set of environmental variables measured for three species. That is, I've got a set of sample plots taken out in the environment and for each of the plots where a species is present I've measured the environmental variables. Now, instead of species it could be habitat types, it could be different times of year, it could be three stations along a transect. The main thing is I've got a set of different places and for each of those I've measured a set of environmental variables. And I want to test for or look for differences among the species or places or times or stations in the environmental variables. Now, if I was interested in just one or a few variables, such as temperature, humidity or light, I could do an analysis of variance on that particular variable. But if I'm actually interested in comparing the whole set, the suite, the group of environmental variables for these different places or times or species, then what I actually want to do is look at all of the environmental variables at the same time. So. Let's see how we could do that. I've got some sample data here in Excel. Now these are actually randomly generated numbers. I haven't actually measured anything here, so I'm just using these as examples. So I'm going to copy, and then I'm going to switch over to the program I'm going to use, PAST. Turn labels on, edit labels on, paste in the data, and then edit labels and edit mode off. And now I've got the sample data in here labeled. Now the first thing I'm going to do is actually color code the different categories. So edit, I could use row color symbol if I want to pick the symbols and colors myself. I'm feeling lazy, so I'll just do numbers. And so now PAST has coloured the different rows or different groups differently, and this will make displays easier to interpret. Now, as I said, these are random numbers, so these are not real measurements of temperature, humidity, slope, or light. But I do want to make a point before continuing. In many cases, the environmental variables can be measured in different scales or on different scales. So temperature could be measured in degrees Celsius, degrees Fahrenheit or degrees Kelvin. And in each case, the actual environmental condition would be the same, but the number we would record would be different. And this means that the results of the analysis would be different. Now, if I did analysis of variance just on temperature, I would get exactly the same results. Different numbers, but the same conclusions, whether I use degrees Celsius, Fahrenheit, or Kelvin. In other words, I would get exactly the same F statistic, or F value, and probability, or P value. Many of the procedures in PAST and many multivariate procedures are sensitive to the magnitude of the numbers. So I would get or I might get different results if temperature was in degrees Celsius or degrees Kelvin. Now that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Also Environmental variables are often different kinds of things. So temperature is degrees Celsius. Humidity is often percent relative humidity, so it's a percentage scale. Light can be measured on a range of different scales. Slope is probably degrees of um, altitude. These are different sorts of things. So the conventional way to deal with this problem is to transform the original observations and to transform 
by normalizing. In some places you'll see this referred to as standardizing. Normalizing is a better term. So I go up here to transform, evaluate expression. Note that before doing this I selected the block of variables. I find it easier to type. So it's mean, whoops, it's x minus mean bracket over STDV, standard deviation compute. And now all the variables have been normalized. And what this means is they all have a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. Now, how do I go about testing for significant differences? There are in fact two procedures in PAST that can do this. So let's go up here to multivar. One is the one-way AnnoSim. This is analysis of similarities. And this was the first procedure that was available. So click here. Now, it's defaulted to Bray Curtis. In this situation, we want to use Euclidean distance. Typically, we use Euclidean distance for environmental variables. So this is a procedure which is done by permutation or randomization of the data. And it calculates a test statistic called R. And you can see that PAST is also given us the probability that the null hypothesis is true. The null hypothesis, no difference among the three species or the three groups. Their p-value is 0 0.0001, considerably less than the standard significance level of 0 0.05. So we would say that there are significant differences among the groups. Down here, the little table is a test for pairwise differences. And the values in the table are the probabilities, again, that the null hypothesis is true. And the null hypothesis in this case is that there's no difference between each of the pairs of species. So we've got comparison of species 1 to 2 and to 3, and species 2 to species 1. Now we can select a few different options here. Um, uncorrected significance, sequential significance, and Bonferroni. So the top one is just doing three separate tests of the three pairwise co comparisons and not doing any corrections for the fact that we're doing three tests at the same time. If I switch down to here, you'll see that the p-values drop. They're still all less than 0 0.05, so that's saying that the suite of environmental variables for all three species is different. But what this is doing is taking into account the fact that we're doing a set of multiple tests. And when we do a set of tests, we're increasing the chance that we'll make a type 1 error. Um, you need to decide which of those that you should use. Now that's AnnoSim. An alternative is one-way NP manoeuvre. This is non-parametric permutational ANOVA, and it's probably the preferred method. The result is going to look fairly similar. We're getting a, um, values from an analysis, or a quasi, pseudo-analysis variance with a total sum of squares and a within group sum of squares and an f value and probability at point whoops switch over to Euclidean distance there um, probability again at point zero 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 one so it's giving us the same conclusion as the NSM uh, which is not surprising and again we've got a table of pairwise differences and if we're concerned about doing multiple tests, we can switch to Bonferroni corrected. Again, all of the p-values here are less than 0 0.05, so there are significant differences among all three groups. 
Now if we want to visualize this, the way to do that will be now I need to go back and reselect and exclude the species column there. Note that for the Anosim and the MP Anova I have to select the species column which has to be first to tell the analysis what are the categories or what are the groups. But if I want to visualize, I'll get rid of that. Principal components is the most appropriate here. And if we look, we can see the percentage variance explained for the first principal component is about 81%. There's another 5% for the second. So the first two principal components explain about 85% of the variation in the data, which is very good. So let's have a look at what this looks like. Scatter plot. Make it just a little bigger and fix a few options here, symbol size, increase, and I like point symbols. And then lastly we can put on row labels. And we can see here that the three groups, the three species are separating quite obviously in the uh, PCA plot. And the biggest separation here is on principal component number one, which is left to right with um, no real separation for the three groups on the other principal component and that is not surprising given that I just generated a fairly simple set of random numbers. So hopefully this gives you an idea of some alternatives for looking at environmental data for different categories of things.